Good afternoon. Hey, Liam. How are we doing, mate? I'm good. You're all okay? All, all good. All good. So, listen, Liam, go ahead, get, get into this rematch. It has been postponed. You was originally meant to go on July the 1st. Um, you had to postpone that through injury. How's it all going now, mate? Yeah, all going well now. Training back, back and full, full swing and, you know, I'm back in full training. I'm looking forward to September the 2nd now. And, like I say, look forward to getting rid of this Kishu Bank saga once and for all. Well, I've seen the build-up again, sort of heating up a little bit between the two of you. You know, he was talking the talk last time and you went out there and I've got to say that you you won that fight in spectacular fashion. I mean, you won inside four rounds. What can he do different? What can he bring to the table that, you know, like it was such a convincing victory by you. What do you feel that he can do different? Not... Not much, to be honest with you, Spencer. I've got to expect something different because I can't expect the same Kishi Bank Jr. because it's the it's a foregone conclusion that's the same outcome. So he, he has to try something different. And when I sit back and try and pick pick me brains on what Chris can do different, you know, look, he, he hasn't got the engine he used to have no more. He's 33 years of age and, you know, he, he just hasn't got that engine no more. So he can come to have a fight with me, but he also leaves himself vulnerable. Mm. He can try and box me with a little bit more shape about him. Because yeah. like I said before, I was openly honest and said he was so erratic and so scared to get hit in the mm. first fight that the shot that hit him, he was looking at the floor. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting one of them two things and either one of them two things I'd be prepared for. Yeah, he said that actually the shot that hit him was a shot that was sent from the boxing gods and it could never be landed again. What was your response to that? Yeah, because that's just, it's just, uh, it's just Chris being Chris. Like I said, um, you know, the shot that landed was your mistake, Chris, because you were looking at the four because you were scared to be hit. But the first right hand buzzed him. Mm. Then the left uppercut hit him and then the left up dropped him. Like It was not one lottery punch. It was a, If you watch it back and count the combination from start to finish, there's 13 punches. Obviously, three of them land very well and, 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 and drop Chris. But like I said, that's just Chris being Chris. Um, mm. One minute to elbow, next minute to shot from the gods, next minute... He blames the referee. It seemed like your your boxing IQ was the, was the thing that sort of kicked in, really. After the first couple of rounds, Chris started quite well. He was landing some good upcuts or whatever. But you was the guy that was able to adapt. And I think that we've seen that in the past. You know, when you look at your career, your record, former world champion, etc. you sort of been there, seen it, done it. And you sort of worked out how to deal with it. And that could be the difference going in here, isn't it? It's like, you know, because you've been at a different level. Yeah, you know what the difference is going to be, Spence, to be, to be totally honest with you? Yeah. For, you asked me how that fight went. That fight was not... An, I never even got going in that fight. It was nip and tuck. It was like, cagey first round. I probably won the first. Not much in the second. Chris won the third because he landed a couple of uppercuts towards the end of the round. There was nothing in the fight. Mm. I never even got going and finished them. Like, Chris is saying he dominated. So, if you, if that, if you call that domination, you're in the world <laughs> of trouble again next Liam, time because I never even got started. Liam... If you if you beat him again and you fancy yourself strongly to do that, is it career ending for Eubank Junior? I think it is. Jim. I said I said last time, uh, you know, Chris was asked would would a loss to me in the first fight was a career end, and I said it probably should be on on his behalf because I'm coming up from one five four. But look, Chris Eubank being Chris, he'll make another excuse, and you know it'll probably be oh, Liam Smith just had my number, and he, he won't walk away from the sport if I beat him again. But, but he should do because. You know, I beat him. He's got no aspirations of becoming world middleweight champion if he's losing twice to me. You sound incredibly confident. Is this the most confident you've ever been going into a fight? You know what? I'm I'm just totally confident. I was totally confident first time round. Obviously, there was that big question mark over Chris's chin. Not question mark over Chris's chin. Question over can I hurt Chris? And I told you all before, and I know I can hurt him. I've hurt him the body, and don't be fooled that I can't hurt him the head. And then I actually done it. In front of all of you, in front of thousands mm. and mm. you know millions of people watching oh, yeah. the TV. When, yeah, when when a fighter seems to be coming to the end of their careers, you know the punch resistance is one of the first things to go. And what we noticed in that fight, actually, with you and Chris, and that was taking nothing away from your performance, the way that you finished the fight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it seemed that his punch resistance had totally gone. You was hitting him with jabs, and you could see him shaking, it's like it's shaking to that, down to the soles of his boots. Do you feel that? You know that that could be something. You know because a fighter because he's known for his good chin, isn't he, Chris yeah, Eubank he is. Jr. And you, I mean, you were shaking him to the soles of his boots with jabs, crosses, hooks, and it looked like from the opening bell for me, it was like, well, it's just a matter of time here until 
you know, Liam catches him with the right shot. Well, I, I did think that from round one onwards, I thought he's very, very wary and very scared of getting hit here. And it's cliche for boxers. We're not scared to be hit. I want to be hit in the first round so I can think, who can't take many of them? Or, you know what? I'm okay with that power. But Chris was so scared and so pulling away and closing his eyes. And I feel the first right hand, he had his eyes closed and was looking at the floor. Now, it's basically like giving me a free shot. Now, if if if, if a man 25 stone gives me a free shot, I knock them out. So, you know, Chris is no different. I don't think he's gone, um, you know, vulnerable and his punch resistance is gone. I just think I landed a good shot mm. that he never saw. It rocked him. And the punches that followed then put him over. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Li- Liam, can I ask you? Because you won the first fight so convincingly, and Spencer has, has emphasised that with his line of questioning with you, is there part of you thinks, I don't have to do this again, do I? <laughs> Look, there's part of me thinking, oh, I don't want, it's pointless, like, I don't really want to. And a lot of people come on, like, when it was mentioned, a lot of people didn't want to see it. But, you know, a lot of people have been drawn into it again mm. now. And, you know, I feel a lot of people will be interested in it. But, Jim, I always knew I was going to have to do it because that was the rigmarole. I was tied into a rematch clause because this wasn't. Mm. So uh, I kind of knew, but I was confident I'd beat him once, I'd beat him twice. He seemed, to, he seemed to get under your skin a lot, actually, Liam, in the build-up to that last one. You know, I was around you all week with that one. He did seem to, you know, he knows the, he plays a good game, he plays a mind game, and knows the buttons to press, et cetera, et cetera. So after that, like, I, I'm probably answering your question for you. I'd want to go over it again. Certainly. You want to see it again, Spencer? Absolutely. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So from this point onwards, Liam, for everybody listening, what is what lies ahead for, for a boxer of your stature between now and fight night? What's your plan? Hard work. Hard Just work. hard work, yeah. Hard work in the gym, getting myself, you know, back in top shape, um, back in fighting condition. I started, I started me sparring yesterday, you know, I'm start sparring again tomorrow. So now it's just again camp away from cameras, away from media. I do everything with my family and my, my coaches that I do every single camp, and you know, I work towards beating Chris again and pushing on to bigger and better things. Liam, can you explain what training camp is all about for the listeners? You know, what you have to do, because you sort of like, you you sort of disappear now, don't you? And, and really lock down. Can you explain a little bit of what it's like? Yeah, look, it's tough and it's the same, it's the same ritual every camp. We'll only fine tune and tweak little bits of sparring based on the opponents. But it's very military, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. very military yeah, it what is, you do. Is. Like I say, the hard work stuff, it's the same week in, week out, sure. camp in, camp out. You know, you do we do the same rituals to get fit. Yeah. But then when we're fit, we fine tune certain sparring partners for Chris or certain spa, pa, sparring partners for a Jesse Vargas or a Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. You know, that's what we and then we'll monitor the pad work. So my my coach and I'll be telling me what Chris does. So we'll be working and defending on that. And we've got a little bit more to work from now because we've just been in the ring with Chris. So that's all that'll be now for the next five weeks and then sure. we're good to go. Then the big night itself. Training camp. We don't hear from you for weeks on end. Wish Simon would go on one. Listen, thank you so much, <laughs> Liam Smith. Brilliant.